We first met Amorosa on The Apprentice, President Trump's TV show, way back in 2004, if you can believe it. Then 14 years. She's been in the Trump orbit in one way or another pretty much ever since. Made her way to the campaign trail, was at the convention, then made her way to the White House. And the now former White House advisor, Amorosa Manigault Newman, claims she turned down 15 grand a month in hush money after she got fired late last year. That's according to the Washington Post, citing Amorosa's upcoming book. And she is torturous, we're told, in that book. She calls the president racist. And the Post reports Newman claims the Trump campaign made an offer through President Trump's campaign advisor and daughter-in-law, Lara Trump. She's Eric's wife. Amorosa says she turned down the offer. Of course, her time with President Trump goes back to the apprentice, as I mentioned. The White House not commenting specifically on the hush money claim or any of the rest of it. But on the book in general, the press secretary, Sarah Sanders, says this. Instead of telling the truth about all the good President Trump has, and his administration are doing to make America safe, prosperous, this book is riddled with lies and false accusations. She goes on, it's sad that a disgruntled former White House employee is trying to profit off these false attacks and even worse, that the media would now give her a platform after not taking her seriously when she had only positive things to say about the president during her time in the administration. She was actually a guest on our program at that convention, and she talked just about that. Times have changed since then. The book is coming out. She'll be on one of the Sunday shows this weekend, and we'll learn the rest of the allegation pretty quick. Amorosa is beginning a media blitz for her Trash Trump book. Meet the Press this morning, Today Show, and MSNBC tomorrow, I'm sure much else. Guy Benson, um, Chuck Todd on NBC asked her, how could you have defended Trump so vigorously for all these years? And now you're saying all these terrible things. She said, well, I had a blind spot when it came to Donald Trump. I wanted to see the best in him. But now he's a racist and a misogynist. Do you find that argument persuasive? No, I don't find almost anything that she says persuasive. I think that she is someone who understands her momentary self-interest and pursues it very, very aggressively. On The Apprentice, she was known as the backstabbing, lying, conniving villain, and that's exactly sort of who she is and how she's conducted You're herself. saying that wasn't just uh, done for television purposes? Oh, apparently not. <laughs> so, I mean, you can question the wisdom of bringing her into the White House, uh, as this administration did, and now they're getting burned for it. But, look, she has contradicted herself numerous times. She claimed that she had no direct knowledge of hearing a tape of the president supposedly saying the N-word back in the day. Now she says, I heard it clear as day. I think she's a liar who will say anything. Mm -hmm. uh, we played earlier the clip from Meet the Press, Susan Free Show, where uh, she secretly taped John Kelly when she was getting fired, and he said a friendly departure would be best for your reputation. She says that's a threat. Um, wouldn't any corporate executive say, hey, let's have an amicable parting? It's like a threat if, to you. Especially if, it, if they were forcing her out. It's not like she was resigning and then they said okay can we keep this quiet whatever reasons are behind it they told her you're gonna leave because you violated some some serious terms of employment here and when we want you to leave with integrity and your head held high that's not a threat but you know hell hath no fury like a person who feels they've been wrong, wrongly terminated and I think that's what you're seeing here I think she's really disgruntled um, there's no telling what she's saying is true or verifiable, but she's definitely angry and, and she's getting a big platform. I would just add, hell hath no fury as somebody who's been terminated and has a book to sell. Oh, right. Capri, <laughs> Capri Cafaro, you know Amorosa. Uh, you can talk about that. Um, and so also, uh, Chuck Todd asked her why she didn't resign after Charlottesville. Of course, the president came under a lot of criticism mm -hmm. for his handling of that violence one year ago, as it turns right. out. Does she have credibility as an African American woman, African American woman, to say, "Oh, I only realized since I was booted that he is he is a racist"? I think this is uh, an issue of a, a larger, uh, as Guy said. I mean, a, a larger issue of credibility. I, I have met Amarosa, you know, a handful of times. She is from my hometown. Um, so she's in Ohio. in Ohio, and you know she came from a from a rough area, um, and she's a scrapper. Look, and that's that's what my community is. I mean, we even have a baseball team called the Scrappers right. as the mascot, right? So here is a person who you know basically scraped her way to the top via Donald Trump's successes, took it all the way to the White House, mm -hmm. and now she's flipping the script and still using Donald Trump as a way to achieve her success for this book by you know creating this level of animus and intrigue. Just briefly, what do you make of Sean Spicer's argument that um, she, the media are going to just fall in love with her in this book, despite the fact that she was kind of treated as a sideshow because it fits the anti-Trump narrative? 
I mean, of course he's right about that. I mean, there's no question about that. If she wrote a glowing book, sort of mostly like his, he wouldn't, uh, she wouldn't get invited for 30 minutes on Meet the Press. She is feeding, spoon feeding the media precisely what they want to hear about Donald Trump, and they are very happy to gobble it up. They'll put her on television. She'll sell a lot of books. Everyone wins except maybe the truth. It'll be temporary. They'll use her for, for getting out the anti-Trump sentiment on, on the certain cable networks, and then she'll be gone. It's a cruel system. business. Yeah, Capri Cafaro, uh, Susan Fricio, Guy Benson, thanks very much. Uh, great discussion. Well, President Trump sounding off on Twitter this weekend, slamming the dossier author, Christopher Steele, the media, and his attorney general, Jeff Sessions. At the same time, former White House aide Omarosa is making her first TV appearance today to discuss her tell-all allegations about the Trump White House. Here to break it all down for us, Siraj Hashmi, commentary video editor and writer for the Washington Examiner. Thank you for joining us on our show. Thank you for having me, Elizabeth. A lot of fallout from that Omarosa, Omarosa interview on Meet the Press. I want to play a quick soundbite for you. It's regards to some of the news that's happening this weekend and get your reaction. As we are celebrating, well, actually observing mm -hmm. the anniversary of Charlottesville, that he has an opportunity actually to bring the country together. But you'll see that he doesn't have the ability to do that because he puts himself over country every day. I would suspect that the White House would point to a most recent tweet where he's coming out and trying to, trying to push unity. Uh, what are you hearing from the White House? What we're hearing from the White House right now, I think, is... Uh they're being strategic in terms of and, and careful about how they responded this time around to the protests happening outside the White House and in Washington, D.C. Of course, there's a lot of security this, this time around, and I don't think law enforcement or the state is letting their guard down this time around like we saw in Charlottesville last year. Of course, President Trump, in his time last year responding to the Charlottesville protests, you know, he did have a huge fumble, politically speaking, and, you know, lost a lot of support within his own party, within the Republican Party, with respect to his take on, you know, kind of both sizing the, the issue about white supremacists and Antifa. Of course, there was probably a better way to handle it, and I don't think he's going to make that mistake again. And certainly he's in New Jersey, but th th it's in Washington. Not that it makes it more or less important, and certainly we have the, the an anniversary of protests in Charlottesville, but it's in his backyard. I mean, I know that he's in Bedminster, but, but they're here. They're in D.C. I want to continue on Omarosa because uh, we had Sean Spicer on. Uh, he was on another network. He had said, listen, her taping the general, because we, we saw those tapes released on Meet the Press, is basically a national security risk. I mean, he was throwing some pretty heavy language at her. Are you hearing that from the White House? Were they surprised by this? I think what we're hearing from the White House is that there were several protocols that were violated. Of course, D.C. laws, you can, they only need one party to consent in terms of recording. But if there was a recording that Omarosa took place in the Situation Room with John Kelly, the chief of staff, you're not allowed to bring cell phones in there. You, I don't know what she actually well, brought in there. Well, and there's non-disclosure. She talked about non-disclosure. Right. Of course, she signed a non-disclosure agreement in which she would not uh, she would not violate, you know, going against the Trump administration, the Trump family, or even President Trump himself. And so there's going to be, there might be some legal right. ramifications for this. Yeah, the story is just beginning. I, I want to get in one more topic in, in the effort of time. Amorosa Manigault Newman is out with a new book, Savaging President Trump, who made her famous by putting her on The Apprentice, then fired her from a White House job in December. She said on Meet the Press this morning that she'd heard a tape from Apprentice Days of Trump allegedly using the N-word. And once I heard it for myself, it was confirmed what I feared the most, that Donald Trump is a con and has been masquerading as someone who is actually open to engaging with diverse communities. But when he talks that way, the way he did on this tape, it confirmed that he is truly a racist. President had a brief but pungent response when a reporter asked about his former aide. Sir. Low life. She's a low life. Joining us now is former White House Press Secretary Sean Spicer, author of the new book, The Briefing, Politics, the Press, and the President. All right, so given that Omarosa was fired just eight months ago from the White House and that she's trying to sell a book about the President, which happens to be called Unhinged, how seriously should the media take her charges? Not, not at all. Uh, look, this is someone who says that she resigned moments after she left the White House. 
Now she says she was fired. This is someone who said the president wasn't a racist. Now she says he was. She says that the president uh, was a great man. They accomplished a lot. Now she calls it into question. What's changed in those eight months? She went on the record right after she left the White House, specifically talking about how she left the White House, why she left the White House, and what she thought of the president. Let me it guess, wasn't, hold on. Is that she's selling a book? I was going to say, the only thing that's changed is she's now looking to make money off of it and sell a book where... Having gone through this process myself, my guess is she sat down with publishers who said, if you'll say the following, we can give you more money. So it is complete opportunism, and it's completely false. Sarah Huckabee Sanders says the book is riddled with lies and false accusations from a disgruntled White House employee. Now, it's interesting because Omarosa said when the, when the stuff started to leak out that she had heard, she knew, she had heard herself. She told NPR she had hurt herself Trump using the N-word back in The Apprentice and now, days. Yes. And then in the book, she attributed it to sources who supposedly had a tape of this. Uh, and then she said that on Meet the Press again today. How credible is that accusation? She, she's not at all. And how I think the, the other point that's fascinating to me is that for all these news organizations to decry the use of the word fake news and talk about the need to be using facts and pursuing the truth, here they are taking someone who has been largely discredited by her own words within a matter of months and putting her on a, a esteemed uh, sh political talk show as a lead guest, wishing her well and passing along accolades on the book, as opposed to recognizing what this is. It's opportunism and it's completely false. But you're saying so she I, has no right to be interviewed? No, she has absolutely right. But my yeah. point is, is that look at the questions that are going to ask. Look at the spotlight that they're putting it on her. These are the same people who ignored her during her time at the White House, who didn't deem her credible, who clearly through her own words and interviews and contradictions is not credible. And yet these members of the media who decry the use of fake news, who talk about the need to pursue facts and the truth, give her a platform and highlight her. Because why? Because she's attacking Donald Trump. That's why. Right. So, so if, she, if she, used she came be, out and she used to be viewed as a kind of a fringe character. Right. And if she, came out, person, if she right. came out and continued the conversation that she had had when she right. left the White House, praising him, none of these people would have her on their shows and none of them would be talking about her. Right. But because she's looking to make a buck, they're willing to put her on and expose her. Because as long as you're being critical of Trump, then they'll give you a platform. But the bigger issue that I think is fascinating after that interview is she taped the chief of staff of the White House in the Situation Room, clearly a violation of every security protocol that she signed when she got a, when she applied for a security clearance. And, and since yet you, not and asked one question about that on that show, not asked about undermining her own security clearance. All right. And since you brought that up, we have the tape as played on NBC uh, this morning. Let's take a listen. I think it's important to understand that if we make this a friendly departure, um, we can all be, you know, you can look at, look at your time here in, in uh, the White House as a year of service to the nation, uh, and then you can go on without any type of uh, difficulty in the future relative to your reputation. So she's boasting about this tape, and she says that John Kelly threatened her with those words. I, I think John Kelly Friendly treated, her, treated yeah. her with a level of respect, considering a lot of the concerns that there were rolling around the White House in terms of her recording private conversations, in terms of her inappropriate use of government um, uh, resources, and the treatment that she had of other employees. John Kelly gave her an opportunity to walk away uh, with her dignity and respect. And how she pays it back is she brings a personal recording device into the Situation Room in the White House in massive violation of every security protocol, that should be the story right now. I mean, the idea that you are willing to go to that length to do that now, who knows what else is happening, but that in itself is a massive security violation. Okay, so let me ask you this before we run out of time. Uh, she says that after she was fired, the Trump campaign offered her $15,000 a month. She would sign a non-disclosure form, and she calls that hush money. Yeah, look, here's the reality. Everyone who worked on that campaign uh, and and it was part of it signed a, a non-disclosure agreement to begin with its standard operating procedure that she had signed multiple times before it's nothing more than the procedure that she had followed before and clearly violated but she left the White House praising the president I think the campaign wanted to to uh, continue a relationship with her based on the comments that she made leaving mm -hmm. the White House. Had they known that she couldn't be trusted, had they known that she would turn on the president, who has frankly given her the entire platform, whether it was the apprentice or the White House, they probably wouldn't have offered her that job. Well, but, by the way... Uh, you know, but we, it, is, it, it was standard procedure for everyone, and her going back multiple multiple opportunities, whether it was the apprentice, uh, the campaign, and otherwise, she had signed non-disclosure agreements that made very similar language each time.
By the way, we talked about this supposed and more tape, which nobody has heard. It's been this big rumor. Uh, one of the sources she quotes in the book is Frank Luntz, who has come out publicly and said he never heard it, he never told her that, and she never bothered to check with him in the writing of the book. So if uh, she now is so troubled by the president's racial language, and look, I mean, she was he, the president did hire her, so he did sort of give her this stature before he decided to let her go through John Kelly. Um, how does she account for the fact that she did he, that the, Donald Trump did so much for her career as an African American? woman. I, I mean, I think, that, again, I think if, if you're looking for contradictions, it's the entire book is clearly riddled with them. Which you've read. I've read, yes. It is over and over again from, from the mere fact that she talks about the fact that she left the White House and said that she resigned. Now she says she was fired. She says that the president was someone that did a lot for the African-American community. He lowered unemployment. He uh, did stuff with the historically black universities and colleges. Um, he has done a lot for opportunities in that community. And yet now, and she was so proud of it during her time, she was very public in her defense of what she had done and what the president has done. And in a matter of months, the only thing that has changed is her son getting a book deal. That's it. Sean Spicer, thanks very much for coming on this Sunday. You